Morning, everybody. Happy Sukkot, Hag Sameach. Everybody try saying that, Hag Sameach. Hag Sameach. That Hag in Hebrew is holiday. Sameach is happy. All right. So we're going to sing just a couple songs to warm us up this morning, and then I'm going to hand over to the team to lead us into the presence of God. First one is Awake, O Israel, and it's drawn from Isaiah 52. Then after that, we're going to sing uh, Hava Nagila. Awake, O Israel, put off thy slumber, for the truth shall set you free. For out of Zion comes thy deliverer in the year of Jubilee. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Wait a minute. Try it again. Oh, wake, O oh Israel, put off thy slumber, for the truth shall set you free. For out of Zion, Comes our deliverer in the year of Jubilee. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. For in the furnace of much affliction, I have chosen thee behold. And so for I am. I'll give you silver, and for brass I'll give you gold. Oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come, my children, and I have sought thee, thou art graven. All those that gather, they shall come back to their land. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, wait a second. We're going to sing uh, at least that chorus one more time. You guys are still half asleep. Dang. Even if you don't know this, this is an old chorus, granted, okay? It's pretty ancient. But if you don't know it, you can at least clap, okay? <laughs> because this is the season of, of, of joy. God commands his people to rejoice during this season of the Feast of Tabernacles. Why do we rejoice? Because God... It's, it's, a, it's a token of his ultimate promise to tabernacle with us, to abide with us, to live in us and among us. And he's, going, he's doing it now, but he's going to do it even more. He's going to be physically present in a very, very short time. So we have cause to rejoice and to celebrate and to clap and to uh, let it go. So one more time, guys, uh, on just maybe that uh, first chorus, okay? Awake, O Israel, put off thy slumber, and the truth shall set you free. For out of Zion comes thy deliverer in the year of Jubilee. Oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Nagila 
blow this ram's horn, okay? I heard someone, who had a kudu here? Who's blowing away? Kirsten? Yeah, somebody blow away with me too, so. Ram's horn is used for all sorts of things. One of the reasons, one of the reasons it was employed under Old Covenant times was simply to announce God's presence, the gathering of God's people. So let's gather together in Jesus' name. I'm not... <coughs> Smart Alec. <laughs> <laughs> Your name, in your name, I will see it. 
stand in faith on every promise that you made. I will see it come to pass in your name, in your name. Jesus, I will trust every word I hear you say. I will see it come to pass in your name, in your name. And I am standing on every promise that you made.
and fall. Silence the ball of sin and grace. Heaven's sorrow, the praise of your glory, for you are. Spirit of
you, Lord, it sounds like water. Jesus, you're beautiful. Lift your eyes and like flames of fire. Lift your head as wide as wool. Lift your voice, it sounds like water. Jesus, you're beautiful. Lift your eyes and like flames of fire. Lift your head as wide as wool. Lift your voice, it sounds like water. Sounds like water, Jesus, you're beautiful, and Jesus, you're beautiful, and Jesus, you're beautiful, and Jesus, you're beautiful. Amen. Lord, that's our prayer, that we would see you as you deserve to be seen, Lord, as you are calling to be seen, Father, that the Jesus that we know would not be the Jesus in our image, but would be the Jesus of the Word, the Word of God made flesh, the Alpha and the Omega, the Lion and the Lamb. Lord Jesus, we ask this morning as we worship, humbly, Lord, we ask, Spirit of Wisdom, Open our eyes again. Spirit of revelation, open our hearts again. We come to you afresh. That we may see Jesus, that we may behold this King afresh.
Seated on the throne, exalted in the train of his robe, fills the temple with glory. The whole earth is filled.
Jesus, we just rest in your glory. It's an invitation, Father, to come closer. It's the invitation to come as we are. It's the invitation to sit in your lounge room. Jesus, to sit at your feet. To be in your holiness, Father. Thank you, Jesus. You made us clean to sit here to be here thank you God that we're called the righteous ones that we can be righteous in front of you Father that you see Jesus in us you only see Jesus in us thank you Father Yeah. 
so much greater than all they to be lifted up oh my be lifted higher be lifted
Just worship him for a minute. Just worship, worship. Worship in, in the spirit. Worship in English. Worship in your tongue. Just give him praise. Jesus on the throne. Beautiful bridegroom. Beautiful one coming king. Lovely one, 
Lovely Jesus, lovely Son, coming King, coming one mighty God. Feast of Tabernacles celebrates the wedding of the bride to her heavenly bridegroom. We're going to look at that and celebrate that specifically next week, but this morning we're privileged to have Jubilee come and dance for us, the song of the bride. And most of you are aware that at the end of a Jewish wedding, the bride and bridegroom are lifted up. It's a mutual lifting up. And this morning we've been singing to our bridegroom, Lord, we lift you up, we lift you up. It's in token of anticipation of prophetic of that day when all the world will bow before the King of Kings and every knee will bow and every tongue confess. And he alone, his name will be the only name and he will be lifted up. Even now, as we lift him up in worship, he continues to draw all men to himself. Men and women recognize, they resonate with the Lordship of Jesus. Everyone wants a king like Jesus. Most just don't know it yet. But the day's coming when they'll recognize the longing of their heart is satisfied only in the bridegroom. Right. 
Thank you so much, Jubilee Dancers. Let's give them another thanks. Hey. <clears throat> so good. You always know when it's Tabernacles time here at Flame Tree, right? The place is just so beautiful, filled with colour, and um, doesn't it just, I mean, there's a sense of expectancy, right, in this season that we've been in, and, um, and we, just get to, we just get to rejoice in it, to be present in it, to, to look with eyes wide open, to watch, to see what God is doing in our midst. And it's just, it's such a, a pleasure. And I was just thinking, you know, we, um, we were singing before, you know, the whole earth is filled. The whole earth is filled with his glory. We sang that song earlier. And, I'm, and then I was sitting there, yes, yes, it's such a, a prophetic um, picture of the kingdom consummated, the kingdom to come, right? The, you know, eternity, Jesus came to establish the kingdom of God. And he's coming again to consummate that kingdom, to fulfill it. And then we will see, yes, the whole earth is filled with his glory. And even as we were singing that this morning, I'm going, yes, it's, it's a now and a not yet. It's the now and not yet of the kingdom. What have we been talking about these last several weeks that arise and shine for the glory of God lives in you? Yeah, the whole earth is filled with his glory. Wherever there is, is a, a believer, wherever there is a disciple of Jesus filled with the glory of God all across this earth, the whole earth is filled with his glory. So we, we sing these songs, guys, you know, we, and, we, and yes, we, we look forward. It, it's all about looking ahead to the marriage of the Lamb, the marriage supper of the Lamb. We look forward. In the meantime, we, we, are, the, we are the bride. <laughs> we are being prepared as the bride. And, and guys, if you've got a problem with that, um, you need to get over yourself. Okay? You know, if, I'm a man. I'm a man's man. I'm an Aussie bloke. I'm not a bride. I'm a man. No, okay. Yes, okay, we get that. But, but as a whole, as the body of Christ, we are being formed and fashioned into the beautiful, spotless bride that, that Jesus, the bridegroom, will return for. And the kingdom will be consummated. And, uh, and there will be no more death, no more decay, no more sin, no more sickness, no more heartache, no more brokenness, just glory. Amen. And so we rejoice. We rejoice. 
we rejoice in the meantime because we're on the way and we get to live in his glory. We get to carry his glory everywhere we go as we go. Yeah. Wow. I just want to say a big shout out to George and Marg. Welcome back, you guys. They've been traveling. We didn't get to thank you publicly as a church for what you did for family camp. So can we just thank George and Marg for all their hours and service for family camp back in August. It's so good. We love you guys. Welcome back. Good to see you safe. And uh, I just want to give a shout out to Brent White over here. Brent, we haven't seen him for a while. We don't often do that, but, but um, we love family when they come home, don't we? So good. All right. Um, I get to share a few thoughts today. Yeehaw. It's going to be good. Hey, um, this, this week, I just want to let you guys know, um, Renee and I and Joel and Ginny had um, just the honour and the privilege of attending uh, a two-day retreat with our fellow Nambour pastors and their spouses. And uh, it's the second time we've done that. We did it last year. This year we went back. And i just got to tell you, we had two days at, uh, at Mooloolaba, and really the agenda was just to build relationship and connection to get to know one another. We had times of worship and of prayer together, but we had a lot of long lunches and long breakfasts and long dinners and coffees where we could just sit and chat with the other pastors, the other spiritual leaders of Nambour. And I, I just got to say, it's so sweet. It's so sweet. Yeah. But it's just a beautiful thing that God is, is building in our community across the churches and across the one church in Nambour. And, uh, and I can say that, hey, we're actually, we're good mates, aren't we, with these guys. And so we're excited to see what God continues to do in that space. I just wanted to let you know that. I also want to let you know, guys know that today, immediately following the service, we have uh, a baptism. Sandy, can you just jump up and give us a wave? This is Sandy, everyone. If you haven't met Sandy, you need to meet Sandy. She's awesome. And uh, we're just so thrilled, Sandy, today. Sandy's come into the house. She's been discipled by Candace and Kyra and been journeyed with. She's, she's attended other baptisms. She's, she's heard the word of God and she's ready to take that step and to follow Jesus with her whole life and her whole heart. And so we celebrate with you today, Sandy. Yeah, so good. All right. Well, we get to speak into this season uh, of the Feast of Tabernacles. But I'll... Just to put it in, in um, I guess, in a context for you guys, this is helpful to me and it might be helpful to some of you, especially if you haven't really been tracking with Flame Tree for all that long. If you've been here for years and years, you would have heard excellent teaching from Joel over the time on the different feasts that we celebrate here. These are not just Jewish feasts, these are biblical feasts. And so we are people of the Bible and so we get to kind of tap into that and the richness and the mystery of what, what they entail. Uh, and so this morning, I just, for me, it's just helpful to look at this season of feasts, these high holy days, if you like, and where we've been over the last couple of weeks and where we are now um, by way of looking at Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur and Sukkot, day of ta- uh, Feast of Tabernacles. So just throw that up there for us. Thanks, Han. This is what um, the Lord says to Moses in Leviticus. Speak to the Israelites and say to them, these are my appointed festivals. These are the Lord's festivals, the appointed festivals of the Lord, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies. And I just love this, this quote from Rabbi Jason Sobel. It says, The feasts of the Lord do not represent an obligation. They are an opportunity for believers of all ethnicities to journey deeper in their faith. They aren't an imposition, but an invitation. And so if you're fairly new to Flame Tree and you're not really sure what, what this is all, this isn't like, you know, the last church I went to. They, they talk in, you know, Hebrew and they blow shofars and there's lots. This is actually, we're responding to the invitation from the Lord yep, to acknowledge and to celebrate the feasts of the Lord. Not an obligation, but an opportunity. Not an imposition, but an in. Invitation. So I want to speak today and just do a little bit of a, I guess, a bit of a, um, uh, a summary of these high holy days that we've been acknowledging and celebrating. And, and for those of you who have been around for a while, my apologies, because, you know, this will be 101 for you guys, um, but, but may it be a refresher for you as well. 
All right, so Rosh Hashanah is our first one that we celebrated a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's also known as the Yom Teruah, Day of Alarm, as Joel shared a couple of weeks ago, the Feast of Trumpets. Rosh Hashanah is the new year, the, the, the head of the, the Jewish new year, the head of the year, we call that. And I still want to hear Sean Connery say that. <laughs> Rosh Hashanah. I think it would be awesome and rich. The head of the year. And, and as, we've, as we've shared before, you know, um, day, days of awe follow Rosh Hashanah for 10 days of awe. And this is all about returning, okay? The Feast of Trumpets is about sounding an alarm, uh, you know, a wake up an, an alarm to the people to return, to return to God, to, to repent, to turn from their ways and to come back to the ways of God. It's, a, it's an invitation from God to his people, first the Jews and now for us as well, to fix our eyes, refix our eyes on him and our orientation upon him. This is what the law says, Numbers 29.1. Now on the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a holy assembly, you shall do no laborious works, it will be to you a day for blowing trumpets. And we're told that in the course of the day, the shofar would be blown 100 times. All right? So if you're not awake by the first, <laughs> the first time, then you've got 99 more. <laughs> the snoo Yeah, hit that snooze button. Okay? No, don't hit the snooze button. Awake. Arise. You remember Joel preached that word two weeks ago. Kum. Arise. Awake. It's our alarm clock to get up. And to, to return to God, to return to your first love. You know, um, Revelation tells us, you know, the, the letter to the church in Ephesus, you're forsaken your first love. It's time to return. And we've been talking about this for a while now, about the, the normalcy of repentance in a believer's life. Now, sometimes, I've, I've, sometimes repentance can sound like that religious heavy word and it's like I've got to you know whip myself with cords and like be really you know broken hearted and full of tears and no repentance is is a normal thing for a believer for a follower of Jesus it, it comes when we realize that oh, I've, I've actually adopted this mindset or this behavior this lifestyle and it is contrary to what God wants for me God's best for me and so I I turn classic example of this just for me this week um I won't go into it, but, but the Lord challenged me on my attitude towards money again. And, uh, and over the course of, a, of an evening and a morning, I realized that I'd been operating out of a, a different spirit, a bit of a poverty mindset, a bit of a lack mindset, and the Lord just challenged me on that because he wants us to be generous. He wants us to be open-hearted and open-handed. Yeah? And so through that time, as I, as I took it to the Lord and as, 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 I, as I prayed and, and examined my own thoughts and reflections, oh, I've, I've actually gone down this road and I need to be on this road. This is God's best for me. And I sim you simply return, simply repent, simply realign uh, our motives, our attitudes, our thoughts with his thoughts. So we, we need to reestablish the normalcy of repentance um, in our daily lives. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a big thing. Just, just turn, just turn. God, your word says this, oh, I've been doing this, I'm coming back to you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your goodness. Yeah. The, um, this Feast of Trumpets also, as we've already celebrated, points not only back but also forward, you know, when that last trumpet will be sounded. As Paul writes to the Corinthians and also to the Thessalonians about that last day when the trumpet will be sounded. Yeah. So we return, we return. To wake up. The next day that, um, that we're looking at is Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. And that was celebrated just this past Wednesday. And this, this might be more familiar to us as, as followers of Jesus because we, we can easily see the connection, if you like, between the Day of Atonement, that one day a year, the holiest day of the year in the Jewish calendar, when, when the only day that the high priest could enter into the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle and later into the temple, right? We, we, we're familiar with, with that story, and, and we're familiar with the fact that, you know, when Jesus um, died, when he breathed his last on the cross, that the gospel writers tell us that the, the curtain in the temple, 
that kept man from approaching God, from kept man from the presence of God, that curtain, the veil, was torn in two from top to bottom, yeah. allowing access for you and I, yeah. not just a high priest, but Jesus acts as our high priest. He is the one who sacrificed himself so that we may have access <laughs> to the presence of God, to the holiness of God. And so we, we can sing songs like we did this morning, holy, 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 holy. You know, we can sing songs like that and still somehow remain on our feet because we're learning to carry his presence in us. So the holiest of days, Yom Kippur, was on the 10th day of this month. It uh, speaks of not only personal atonement but also national atonement. Yeah. And um, let me just go to... Let me just go to Hebrews here, because Hebrews speaks a lot of, of you know, the, the complete sacrifice, the completeness of Jesus' sacrifice. Hebrews 9, um, picking up from verse 6. Uh, when everything had been arranged like this, the priests entered regularly into the outer room to carry on their ministry, but only the high priest entered the inner room, and that only once a year, yep, Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement. And never without blood, which he offered for himself and for the sins the people had committed in ignorance. The Holy Spirit was showing this by this, that the way into the most holy place had not yet been disclosed, as long as the first tabernacle was still standing. Let me jump down to verse 11. When Christ came as high priest of the good things that are already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not man-made. That is to say, not a part of this creation. You remember that when Moses was giving the, given the instructions for building the tabernacle in the desert, they were a, a form or a pattern of what exists in heaven. All right, Not man-made. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once for all, by his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean sanctify them so that they are outwardly clean. How much more, then, will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death, so that we may serve the living God? All right, and then verse 27, let me just read this one. Just as man is destined to die once and after that to face judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people, and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. It's, it's good news. And this shows us how the sacrifice of Jesus perfectly wraps up all the requirements, all the expectations, all the practices of the Old Testament sacrificial system, that Jesus came to die once as a, as a spotless lamb, as a perfect sacrifice to take upon himself the sins of all mankind, to die once so that we may live, so that we may be declared righteous. Yeah. It's, 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 it's great news. And so this Yom Kippur Day of Atonement speaks of redemption, it speaks of, of buying something back. Jesus has bought us back from sin and death. Yeah. You know, in, in the book of Revelation, when the Lord says, Behold, I am making all things new. Yeah. He doesn't say, I am making all new things. He says, I am making all, all things new. That speaks of redemption. He is redeeming. Even, even now... He is redeeming stories, you know, and, and this, we hear testimonies in this house regularly of how God is redeeming us. You know, I once was like this, but now I'm like this. I, I once was blind, but now I see. I once was lost, but now I'm found. But, but, and, and, you, and you know, you know the stories that are in the house, and, and your story is a story of redemption as well. Each of our stories is a story of redemption, that God is bringing newness, newness, new life out of our brokenness. And that's what he's done by way of the cross, the resurrection. 
it, um, it speaks of so that atoning sacrifice, but it also speaks of the, the scapegoat. On the day of, of atonement, Yom Kippur, um, Aaron was commanded to take two goats, and, uh, and one of them would become that sacrifice, right? And the blood would be spread on the altar, and that's when he would go into the most holy place. And the second goat became the scapegoat, and you can read there where he would be laying hands on the goat and to basically put all of the sin of the nation on that goat, which would then be led out into the wilderness, yeah. um, presumably never to return. I don't know what would happen if it would come back. That'd be a bit of a problem. But, but it's, 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 it's done, okay? It's done. And so the, the sins of the nation are being atoned for through the scapegoat. And that's where we get that saying, you know, a scapegoat. But Jesus was the ultimate scapegoat for us. He took upon all the sin, all the curse, all the... All, Everything that separates us from God, he took it upon himself and bore it on the cross. Yeah. And then he, he went into the wilderness of death, of, of the tomb, of the grave, yeah, with those sins. Yeah. And when he rose again, he rose without it. Yeah. So powerful, powerful picture, powerful reality. And so we celebrate Yom Kippur, yeah, the holiest of days. And, uh, and, and recognize that this, this redemption brings us you know, to oneness with God, at one moment, atonement, at one moment with God. But also speaks of uh, our at one moment with one another, at one with, with each other. You know, Jesus says some really challenging things in the Sermon on the Mount. He says, if you're, if you're there worshiping God at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, stop worshiping. That's outrageous for a rabbi to say, don't worship God. Stop it. Push pause and go and be reconciled to your brother or sister. Put it right. God is so concerned about our wholeness that it's not just about our vertical relationship with him that we are sanctified and saved and made at one, but he's concerned about our oneness with, with each other, with other believers. Yeah. The stark contrast here to the teaching of the day which would said, let nothing come before your worship of Yahweh. Jesus says here that right relationships with each other are connected with worship. <laughs> yeah. We are to receive and extend forgiveness the way of Jesus. And just again, Paul speaks in, uh, in 1 Corinthians that, that you all together, he says, are the temple of God. Yeah. That the Holy Spirit lives in you together, he says. 1 Corinthians 3 16, all of you together are the temple of God. And so he calls us to that picture again of oneness, one to another. So Rosh Hashanah is about waking up, returning. It also points to Jesus' return. Yom Kippur is, is, is about redemption. Jesus has, is, and he will bring in our lives, making us one with God and with one another. And also points to the time when all Israel will be saved where the nations will witness the combination of God's kingdom, where the nations will recognize Jesus as Messiah and worship him, that there would be this, this fullness of redemption yeah, in the bride of Christ. Is that fair enough? Cool. Okay. How am I doing, Joel? It's going okay? Good, good. <laughs> oh, well, look at that. Oh. A little bit of claps from the back stalls there. Oh, thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm on my P's test here. Is that right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, here we go. Sukkot. Okay, Feast of Tabernacles on the 15th of Tishrei. You know, and, um, you know, the, the question might be asked, why do the Jews celebrate um, the Feast of Tabernacles? And the answer is because um, ec the Exodus was intense. Little joke there for you. Come on. The Exodus was intense. Come on, give me something here. Give me something here. Yeah, all right, thank you. <laughs> of course, yeah, okay, so Sukkot, named after the, the, the tents or the tabernacles that the Israelites were called to, to live in, to live under, to tabernacle in as they were walking, working their way through the wilderness. It's a feast of tabernacles, and that's what we're, we're celebrating today. And the command is to celebrate that for a week. And it's all about rejoicing, as we've already, we've already 
um, identified today. We're called to rejoice. That's a pretty cool command, isn't it? Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Yeah. Um, one of my opening prayers of a morning is, um, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. That was an old chorus, wasn't it? It's also a psalm. Yeah. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah, try starting your day with that if you're heavy, if you wake up cranky. You know, no. This is, this, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah? Think of the, uh, the parable of the lost sheep and the lost coin. Yeah, what, what, did, what did the shepherd do and the woman do when they, when they found that sheep and that coin? They, they, they rejoiced. Yeah. Come and have a party with me. The, you know, I, I'm, come and rejoice with me for my coin was lost, but now and it's found. And Jesus says, I tell you, there'll be much rejoicing in heaven among the angels over one sinner who repents. Yeah, much rejoicing. We've got we've to get our rejoicing muscles back on, church. Yeah, to, to rejoice over the truly things worthy of rejoicing. We've got, a, we've got a dear sister going through the waters of baptism this morning because she has decided that she wants to follow Jesus with her life. And so we rejoice. The angels in heaven are rejoicing. This is good, good news. Yep. And, um, and so uh, the Sukkot, named after the shelters that they built in the wilderness, where, God, where we remember that God gave his, his protection, um, his provision and his presence. God gives his protection, his provision, and his presence. His protection from the heat, from the desert. He gave provision through manna, from the water in the rock, and he gave his, his presence where he, he, he gave Moses the, uh, the template for the tabernacle and he promised to, to dwell there where God, yet the Israelites were tabernacling, they were living in their shelters, but God tabernacled with them in the tabernacle, which was later to be a temple. And as I was contemplating this through the week, I was, I was just really struck by something that, um, that Glenn Blickney shared uh, in one of his talks last weekend. And uh, I think it was on the first night, but it was in, in John chapter 15. And it'll be familiar to you guys. Where Jesus says in verse 4, he says, abide, abide in me, abide in me, or tabernacle in me, and I will abide in you. I will tabernacle in you. Abide in me, and I will abide in you. And the, the verb here, meaniate, is to remain, to abide, to stay. And it's linked with, uh, with a verse just in the chapter before, verse 23 of chapter 14, where Jesus says, if anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. We, we, will, we will abide with him. Or if anyone loves me, he'll obey my teaching and they will become an abode. The, the verb there is, is the, the noun there is the same version of the verb in chapter 15. Uh, Mino, it means lodging. We will make a home in him, a lodging, a dwelling place, or a home abode. So as we abide in Christ, we become an abode. And as I was reflecting on these words from Glenn that he shared, I was just sitting with the Lord one morning and, um, and, and I thought, well, as the Lord comes and makes an abode in me, what else might he find that has settled there? What have I made peace with that he may want to dislodge? What are my resting thoughts? What are, what are, my, what are the ungodly beliefs that I'm still carrying that as he makes an abode in me, he would, he would want to challenge and dislodge? See, John starts his gospel by telling us that the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Yeah, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. He tabernacled among us in the person of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so as, 
as we abide in Christ and we welcome him to make an abode in us, what is it that the Spirit of Jesus finds already settled there, already settled in your life, in your attitudes, in, in your mindsets, in, in beliefs? And, and what is it that he wants to say and do about that? Paul writes, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. We're, way back, we're right back at repentance again, aren't we? In our rejoicing, as we abide in him, as he makes his abode in us, what is it then that he wants to pinpoint and say, let's work on that? I'm moving in. One of, the, um, one of the pictures that we used to share with, with brand new believers is, is when you become a Christian, when you become a follower of Jesus, uh, it's, like, it's, like moving, it's like moving house. And you guys know, we've all moved house, right? There's a moving in day, generally. Yeah, it might, might be in drips and drabs, but there's, there's a day that you realize that, oh, I'm living in a new house, okay? For most of us, it's a day. Same thing when we get saved. This is the day I, I believed. I realized that I believed, yeah? When we, when we become a Christian, it's like, ah, the Holy Spirit moves into our house. And then what happens then over um, a period of time when we move house, what do we do? We settle in rooms, don't we? <laughs> we, uh, we renovate. Um, we redeem different, different parts of the house, different places. We, uh, we might want to paint a wall here or, or put a piece of furniture there or change the carpet there. There's a process that takes place and it's the same as we follow Jesus, as we come into this life of sanctification by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit moves into our house one day and then over a period of time, weeks, months, years, decades, in fact, he's working on our house until the day we die. Yeah. Changing up different rooms of our house, different rooms of our life. Yeah. This is my money room. This is my sex room. This is my, my um, career room. This is my family room. This is my, um, I'm not going to you know, ever open the door in this room because I'm too scared of what you might find in that God room. Yeah. Now, the Holy Spirit wants access. He wants to, to make an abode in your life. And our role is simply to, as we rejoice, to surrender. <laughs> to surrender, to welcome his work. As challenging and as uncomfortable as it may be at times, to welcome his work as he comes into our life and as he sanctifies us by his spirit. Yeah. And so this um, Feast of Tabernacles is all about celebrating. You celebrate it as a feast to the Lord for seven days in the year. It's a statute forever throughout your generations. You shall celebrate it. I love the book of Nehemiah. The book of Nehemiah, it seems, all of a sudden, go read Nehemiah because um, they, they find the law and it happens to be the first day of Tishri, all right, Rosh Hashanah. It just happens to be. And, they come, and then they come into this, this time of celebration. They realize, oh, we're in tabernacles now. And, and, and Nehemiah says, you know, celebrate, rejoice. And it says those beautiful words, the joy of the Lord shall be your strength. The joy of the Lord shall be your strength. And so... We are rejoicing at this time. We're recapturing what it means to be the people of God. We're, we're restoring the normality, the norm, no normalcy, the normality of repentance. Yeah. We're engaging every day in, in what God is redeeming in our lives, and we are learning to rejoice, rejoice. Yeah, this is the day the Lord has made. And so we just celebrate you, Lord, for your plans, for your purposes, for your good work in us, Lord God. And we thank you that you started that all the way back, all the way back in time. We thank you, Father God, for the example of our brother Israel. Father, we thank you for your patience with Israel all through the centuries. We thank you, Lord God, that you are restoring to yourself one new man. Lord, you're bringing down the wall of hostility between Jew and Gentile, and you're restoring oneness of your kingdom, Lord, in preparation for this beautiful marriage feast of the Lamb. Father God, bring it, we pray. Bring it, bring it, bring it. We look to you, Father. We thank you that in Jesus, Lord, you came to establish not just, not just our personal salvation, but your kingdom. 
And Lord, we declare that you are king over this earth and that you are king, Lord, of our lives. And so we, we place you afresh on the throne, Father, and we invite you by your spirit to show us those areas, Lord, of our life where you're calling us to repentance. Lord, again, refresh us, Lord, in our understanding of what you're redeeming in each of our lives, Father God, and fill us with lives and hearts, Lord, that are used to rejoicing, but that it never get old, gets old. Lord, let it be, Father God. We just bless you, we praise you, and we thank you.